Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to CData Arc. This video shows how EDI data is translated and mapped within Arc. It's also the last video of a three-part series that includes an AS2 connection setup and back-end integration. We'll tie those two other videos together here, so let's get started. Here in CData Arc, we see our setup from the previous videos, an AS2 connection and a connection to SQL Server. This exemplifies typical end-to-end -end EDI flows, with a front-end and a back-end, and now our job is to tie these together. EDI mapping has two steps. First, we translate the EDI into XML with a dedicated EDI connector, and in this case, I'll use the X12 connector since we're imagining our inbound documents are X12. Then, once the data has been translated to XML, we want to map that XML into a format that matches our SQL Server tables. To do that, we'll use the XML map connector. And don't worry, the XML map connector is smart enough to understand what format the SQL Server connector needs. So let's go ahead and connect these connectors so that data automatically flows from our AS2 connection to our database. Now we'll perform some basic X12 configuration before moving on to the mapping step. In the X12 connector, the required settings appear here in the settings panel. This translation type is used to differentiate inbound X12 versus outbound X12. Right now, we're working with inbound, so we want to translate that inbound X12 into XML that ARC will process further. The interchange settings are where you configure the X12 identification values for you and your trading partner. Since we're receiving X12 documents in this example, our X12 identifier would go in the receiver identifier, and our partners would go in the sender identifier. And finally, we have some settings for indicating the X12 standard we're using, whether this is test or live production data, and how to process X12 acknowledgements. And we can leave these all as defaults for now. So after configuring this connector, we can now validate and translate our partner's EDI documents. Now it's time to map the XML produced by this X12 connector into something that our SQL Server connector can process. First, I'll go into the XML map connector to set the input and output templates that we want to map between. The XML map connector already understands the format for the SQL Server connector, simply by being connected to it in the flow. The XML map connector can also read templates from the X12 connector, but it doesn't yet know what X12 document type we want to map. So I can scroll through these document types from the list, or I can make the template a little bit more specific by providing an example file representing my trading partner's documents. To do that, I'll briefly return to the X12 connector, then I'll head to the Input tab, select the More dropdown, and then Upload Test File. I'll select an example of the EDI files that my partner would send me and let the X12 connector use that as a template. Then I can return to the XML map connector and set the source file template to the new test file by scrolling to the bottom of the list. With my template set, I can see now the structure of my input and my output templates in the Visual Designer. Now my task is to drag and drop from the left to the right to establish a mapping relationship between the two. This requires some understanding of both my EDI document and my database, but for this example, I know that each TX401850 in my source corresponds to an order in the EDI document, so I'll map these to the orders table. This creates a for each relationship. For each 850 transaction, I want to insert a new order. Next, I can drag values from the EDI document into the corresponding column for my database. I know that the purchase order number is contained here in the BEG segment, so I can drag it over. And then I know that some of my customer data, like my customer name and address, is contained in these in one loop one segments. For mapping specifics, like how to dig into these in one loop ones and determine which one is the customer, you can check out our in-depth mapping video series. But for now, I'll move on to the line items, which are a child table of orders. I need a new for each relationship to handle each line item within each order. So I'll drag this PO1 loop one element to create that nested for each. Now I can continue dragging line item values, like the quantity in PO102, and the price in PO104. I do need to scroll up to find the PO number again, because that needs to be associated with both the line items as well as the orders. I could continue dragging and dropping to map more values here, but hopefully the process is clear. First, you create for each relationships when there are repeated structures in your data, like multiple orders or multiple line items. Then you drag individual values into their appropriate column or element to establish a mapping relationship. I'll go ahead and save my changes here, and we can test this entire EDI flow. First, we fire off our flow by going to the AS2 connector and sending an example EDI document back to our own AS2 connector. Naturally, this is a pretty contrived circular connection just for the purposes of this video, but it simulates receiving an AS2 message from an external trading partner. Once we've received this EDI document, the EDI data travels through the flow, getting converted into XML, 
then gets mapped into the appropriate format to be inserted into SQL Server. So I can find the file here in the input tab of the SQL Server at the end of the flow, successfully sent into my database. So that wraps up our three-part series on end-to-end -end EDI integration, AS2, backend integration, and EDI mapping to tie it together. Thanks for watching, and as always, you can find more resources at arc.cdata.com.